main attraction, these are right now, and then these specifically were just tables. Okay. <laughs> can you uh, just with where if you're going off of Facebook, can you tie any of the answers back to Facebook or where the source was? Just because I think that's a different makeup of people that might be using Facebook and how they would respond. So our survey was um, we. Um, asked some of our friends who live at Peoria Heights to share a survey on their pages to reach that audience. And then we also emailed um, the representatives at Peoria Heights. And all of their surveys were emailed to the business owners. And the business owners sent it out through their Facebook pages. And so um, it was also posted on the Peoria Heights um, website as well. So there were many different avenues. And so we can see specifically <coughs> each respondent's, like their age, um, if they're married or not, um, how many kids they have and whatnot. But I don't think we can actually pinpoint if they saw it through Facebook or if they saw it through the Peoria Heights website just because it wasn't a question that we asked in our demographic. Do you know how many people chose went off the Peoria Heights website to see? Um, no, I, I don't have that information. Okay. I'm just curious. We didn't ask a question, I'm sorry. It's, how did you specify the boundaries of Peoria Heights with your survey? Was it city limits? Was it specified? Well, uh, no, we basically just Candidates, residents, and non-residents. So we had a question in the survey that asked them whether or not they were a resident and whether or not they were not resident. Any other questions? Okay, well, if you guys think of a question, feel free to ask us at any point in time. But we just want to thank you again so much for taking um, time out of your day to sit and hear our presentation. And we hope you have a great time. Thank you. Restaurant sectors. 
Um, second, we wanted to see how those views affect their perceptions and their interest to visit Peoria Heights. Um, third, we wanted to see how the current level of parking affects Peoria Heights. And finally, we wanted to see thoughts from the public on upcoming developments. So first we had secondary research, and the purpose of this was just to give us an idea of what thoughts people had on Peoria Heights so far and research that has been done. Um, what we found was demographics of the, of the geographical region and pros and cons of living in Peoria Heights. We also found rankings, um, information on the business district, as well as reviews, information on the landmarks, and regional competitors. From all of that, we decided to mention to you today just things that we thought were relevant um, for our objectives and just what we're going to talk about today. We saw that competitors to Peoria Heights as a whole, um, the Peoria Warehouse District, and then competitors to residential, um, the residential aspect of Peoria Heights are 401 Water Street and the Civic Center Plaza Apartments. And finally, some dining competitors are Jim Steakhouse and Table 19. We also found two similar case studies um, of Cory, Wyoming, and closer to home, Galena, Illinois, and these are two towns that are noted for their atmosphere, and they are also looking for some economic development and to add more to their towns. Um, we do go into more depth in our paper about the research that we found, um, but we just use these to get an idea of a town, some towns similar to Peoria Heights and how they went about um, asking their questions and what they found. Our qualitative research, um, this the goal of this was to gain a perspective on our target audience as well as using this to create a survey with a more narrow mindset. And with that, we went out and interviewed 15 individuals um, who are not residents of Peoria Heights. And our overall findings were their favorite parts about the Heights um, is the atmosphere and the restaurants. We also found that they have issues with finding parking spots. They, have, they would like to see, um, as a result of that, more parking and also more retail, retail options to possibly diversify um, the re retail that's offered now. They, were also, they also said they were willing to drive 30 minutes and at most an hour to get to Peoria Heights. And finally, um, when we asked about any change, they just would like to see Grandview Drive and also residential areas protected from any change. So from our qualitative and secondary research, we use that to form a survey that Maddie and Christian will come around and give you some um, examples of our survey. And in our survey, we use scales, ratings, open -ended questions, and frequencies to get a better understanding of people's opinions of, of Peoria Heights and future development that may come as well. So most of these questions are on 10 point scales of importance, frequency, of use, and effective or agreeable agreeableness, 10 being most favorable. Uh, second sampling plan, how we went about getting participants to take our survey. Our sample population, um, everyone who took our survey were non-residents of Peoria Heights to get the outside perspective of the Heights. We used convenient sampling, meaning that we went door to door or face to face to get people to take our survey, as well as using social media and emailing it out. And a result from this, um, our sampling size was 137 people who participated in our survey. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a profile of those respondents from the survey. So to start off, we did um, have a variance in the range of our respondents, but as you can see here, nearly a quarter of our respondents were in the age range of 19 to 24, but we did have respondents all the way up to the ages of 65 to 74 as well. And for the gender of respondents, um, nearly 80% of respondents were female. And as far as the marital status goes, 60% were married. And then for the household income of respondents, we also have quite a variance here. But as you can see, we, so we have um, all the way to less than 25,000 household income. But a majority of our respondents fall in the category of $100,000 or more. So this is a lot greater than your average household income in the Peoria area, but this kind of gives a better representation of 
the individuals that are actually visiting the hive. And then we also had a question asking the average amount of children that the respondents have in their residence <coughs> that are under the age of 18. And so we had all the way up to three, but that's as far as we <coughs> And then here we have a geographic representation of our respondents. So as you can see here, the, the bigger and the bolder the number, the more respondents fall in that category. So you see the Dunlap, um, the 61550 is the more resident. So we had respondents that were coming from all of the surrounding Peoria communities as well. So now that we got a profile of who our respondents were drawing from, let's go over some of the questions that we asked them. For the following slides, you can follow along with what we provided with you today. It should be in the correct order. So first thing that we wanted to ask was, what are the opinions of our respondents in regards to the shopping in the Peoria Heights? We asked things like, uh, what's their opinion of going there often? How would they, what the options were like? Do they feel like they had good value? Um, do they feel like they expected to pay more? And their overall enjoyment. Um, overall enjoyment and their expectancy to pay more were higher, while the frequency and their feeling of value were much lower in their ratings. Then, go for some back more. So this sure. is, just tell me a little more about these different measures. Expect to pay more, what was that question about? Um, when we asked that, we asked uh, specifically um, if they expected to pay more when they shopped in the Peoria Heights. And what we were trying to get by that is what were our respondents' opinions of the overall shopping when they shopped there, and how they felt about the items as a whole. If they felt like if they were going to shop in Korea Heights, the quality and the price they paid would likely be on the higher end as opposed to more convenience stores or lower end shopping options. From there, we wanted to go on and talk about parking. This was something when we first met with Peoria Heights that they talked a bit about. Um, we asked if they were aware of the options, how they felt about walking within Peoria Heights, how often they would want to walk, and how much additional parking would benefit the Peoria Heights in terms of willingness to visit. Um, additional parking scored extremely highly as something that would contribute to people being more likely to visit the Peoria Heights, but um, people were not, they did not feel like they were very aware of the existing options for parking in the Peoria Heights. Then we went on to ask about uh, our respondents' dining experiences within Peoria Heights. We asked uh, what they felt of the variety of options, uh, their value assessment of it, their familiarity with the existing establishments, the quality that's in the establishments that are existing right now, and their overall enjoyment when eating in the Peoria Heights. Uh, respondents uh, responded very highly to how they felt the quality of the food and their experiences were, and their overall enjoyment while eating in Peoria Heights. But overall, all options were rated higher. Then we wanted to look at overall purchases made in this a month at establishments on average from our respondents. We rated this one as a frequency and not at a one to 10 scale. So as you can see here, all and Sons scored fairly highly at averaging a roughly five purchases made per month from our respondents, while Perfect Care Boutique was around three and a half. And then from there, all the other uh, stores that are listed as options in Peoria Heights scored under one, with all the options listed on the right that are not on the graph actually having zero. Namely, uh, the Hair Design, Global Village, I Know You Like the Book, Parrot Jewelry Designs, Purple Bubble Fragrance Bar, Sushi Boutique, and The Nook. From there, we wanted to ask, how, many, how often do our respondents visit the Pure Heights restaurants in a month? From here, we also did a frequency for respondents as well. Jim's Bistro, Public House, and Leaves and Beans all scored over once per month for average visits, while set on prospect closely behind. Everything else was under one. In conclusion from this, uh, we wanted to say that there was an overwhelming amount of demand for additional parking options, but many felt they were unaware of the existing parking options that are available right now in the Heights. From there, we also said that the most visited retail option by far was All One & Sons Beat Company, 
and that the most patronized restaurants were Jim's Bistro, Leaves and Beans, Seven on, Postre, Seven on Prospect, and The Public House. Is there any questions that we want to ask specifically about our survey? We can go over them. Yes? Well, in, in the previous presentation, we, we talked about the need for grocery stores, and now we see a lot of our customers visiting all of us. How do you, what do you make of that? Um, I think a good way to look at that is looking at the previous conclusion we, we came from when we pulled on income. And we noticed that our income was higher. All Wood & Sons is more of a specialty store, and their prices are a little higher on average. And I think that correlates to that. And also, you could look at um, if people are looking for more options for food, they might lean on All Wood & Sons for their meat needs as well. Also to add to that, um, we because we surveyed non-residents, um, this shows that people are coming in, um, if they're coming in for retail like that, all one sense is what they'll be coming in for. Like that was the highest frequency um, from our data. Could that be lunch visits too? Yeah. It is. It could be it included could. as well. Is there any other questions about the survey? I can answer them right now. All right. So now we're going to take a look at uh, upcoming development. So we asked, uh, what did uh, non-residents feel as though should be added to the heights. And we used a rating scale here, uh, with one being the highest rated. Uh, with that in mind, if you look at the graph, uh, a microbrewery option was actually the highest rated uh, by non-residents, followed up by uh, upscale apartments, and then a park. In terms of gender, uh, with the same question, uh, it was actually interesting to see that more females uh, voted a microbrewery uh, higher than males did. And it was the opposite effect with the park. More males had voted for uh, the park being higher than the females did. And then in terms of the upscale apartments, it was fairly even between the two genders. Now, based on household income, uh, blue is obviously the low income, uh, orange the medium, and gray the high income. Uh, many of the high income individuals voted for the microbrewery uh, as, as their highest option. Uh, with the park, it was the opposite. Many of the lower income individuals had voted for the park, whereas the uh, higher income individuals uh, did not write it, rated as high. And then the upscale apartments, it was fairly even between the uh, three uh, income levels. Excuse me. When, it, when they talked about a park, because we, we do actually have quite a few parks. Um, are they not a, like what kind of a park? Like a park for specific athletics or? Um, we really go into, I mean, it's more of a general question just in terms of what they would like to see. It wasn't really specifically a uh, playground or uh, open field or soccer field or anything like that. Uh, many of these um, options that we wanted to ask about, we got from that initial meeting, um, things that, uh, were mentioned to us, and then we also put in uh, things that were mentioned to us through other research as well in the beginning process, and that's kind of how we came up with this list um, okay, that so we have here. Like parking, it, it may be more of a communication issue then to people outside of Peoria Heights? Then? Very likely. It could, yeah. And the microbrewery um, was added on there, it wasn't discussed at the meeting, but we found that from our qualitative research, like going through and actually talking to people. Some. It was mentioned in a majority of our interviews. Okay, and then we have our respondent opinions. Um, again, this was just a question we asked that they would like to see as beneficial on a 1 to 10 scale. So you can see that, again, just backing up our further information was that needs for more public uh, parking options was rated the highest. Um, coming right in underneath the Senate. And then also there's the microbrewery that pops up again. It's a very high option. Uh, and then it needs a more diverse retail mix comes in the third highest option. And we see that with our non-residents. We're just wanting uh, more diversity amongst the retail stores that are offered. Maybe something, in a quantitative research, we have a lot of men saying they didn't really feel there was options for them or that price points was a lot of different things. People want to see options in as well. Um, and then on the lower end, uh, we have the dog park and the support for tax incentives. So these are all things that uh, we found interesting. Okay, 
Okay, so this graph is support for the invention that we had. Uh, for this, we had a mean of a 4.55, but we went ahead and compared everything and switched that to a natural point of zero, so it was a little bit easier to understand and read. So everything to your right is all the positive things that people are willing to support and see come into the Heights area, and everything to the left on the negative side are things that they weren't quite as interested in. So coming in at a 2.95, you can see that's actually the microbrewery that was brought up several times. Then right after that, at a 2.94 was the farmer's market, and this is also something that we pulled from our quantitative research as well. And so that could also, going off your question about the grocery store, this could be something else that people are wanting to come and see infiltrated in the lights during the summer months or the warmer times. And then 2.85, we have a beauty shopping point. And then for the lower things that people really weren't in need of were the doctor's office, the nursing home, and a veterinarian. And this could also be a majority because uh, these are not as good, so it wouldn't be as beneficial for them to see. Go, go back. Yeah. yeah so just kind of, kind of walk us back through this. So we got microbrewery, which right. is, is most favorable. Right. Farmer's market. Yes, then we have the beauty shop and then a chain grocery store, actually, as mentioned um, previously by the other group talked about that. And then we had an ice cream shop would also be favorable and a clothing store. And then after that, everything ends up going on to the negative side, which would be uh, the dentist's office, a hardware store, a gift shop, a veterinarian, a nursing home, and a doctor's office. Thanks. So in conclusion, what we pulled from our upcoming data of the first initial meetings we had with you all, and then through our quantitative research, we found that respondents thought that more parking throughout the heights would be beneficial. And that could also be something simple as just generating awareness also for the people who are traveling into the Heights area. Because there are a lot of options available, but just maybe making um, clients more aware when they come. Customers are looking for more diverse retail business. As I've already uh, said, that would help complement your guys' already existing retail mix that you have. Uh, overwhelmingly, customers are willing to support a local microbrewery at the farmer's market. And other developments that were favored are the upscale apartments, the park, and the boutique hotel. Okay, so we have a, um, a couple of recommendations from you guys just from looking through all of our data and all of our research that we found. So the first one that we found was um, additional parking option, options or, like she mentioned, bringing awareness to that. So you can see here, these are actually some specific quotes that we got from our survey as people were able to write those in. And uh, the first one, let's see, it says, I also run into parking issues occasionally, but that's mainly during the weekend. So maybe doing something where you can offer a way to have more parking during the weekends as people are running into issues there. Or parking can be an issue, and some people said that there needed to be better lighting in the back lots or in different lots at night. And then definitely more parking, have more open on Sunday. So there again, we're seeing more prevalent on the weekends, having issues with parking. And sometimes I can't find nearby parking, but I just find other parking and walk. I wish there was a park there so I could get more coffee or food and go hang out somewhere. Um, and then, like the other group had mentioned, another thing was about it's hard to find parking in the four-lane road. And it's a little intimidating because there's parallel parking on a very busy road. So they're just talking right along there in the downtown. So um, maybe figuring out more parking along there or people signs where people know where to go and are available to park there. The next recommendation that we had was raising awareness of local businesses. And this can be through social media or any other means that you guys have, you know, amping up the Facebook page so people know specifically what there is to offer because you do have shops and you do have dining options available, but sometimes people are just not fully aware of what those options are. And so um, some quotes about this is they do not advertise much what was there. Um, another one, publicized businesses. Some just, we had a lot of respondents just writing down, strictly just advertising. And the last 
last one is like we had mentioned that we pulled from our qualitative research, the possible addition of a microbrewery or a farmer's market. And we did have some quotes that you can see there talking about that. So we would really just like to thank you guys for taking the time to listen to our presentation. And if there's any specific questions, as we are right here, feel free to ask. Yes. Are you aware of something, because it seems like if people aren't on Facebook, so much is done through Facebook and even, so if you're not on Facebook, you're, you completely disconnect from a whole group of people and then other things there's, is people have to go to a website. Is there something where you can push information to people by, whether it's a community, I don't know, communication system or something where the village has something that you can sign up for and then stuff is pushed to you very easily so it's not... You know, like like administratively, yeah, I have whatever, something like that. But I mean, a little bit less, you know, like someone doing So, like, you know, they, they yeah. wouldn't have to be on social media, is that what you're saying? Yeah, because I think there's a lot of people, I mean, I, I'm not on social media, but I, because I just don't want to be, and actually, if you look at some of the trends with Facebook and things, people are starting to disconnect a little bit. So, I think you've got to look at where trends are going, and then what makes it accessible to all age groups as well. Yeah. Um, I also wonder too, did you guys do any sort of like magazine or to get out to people that, because we are, I mean our group is looking at the non-residents. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that you can get out and have people, you know, flip through say, oh this is what we're offering at this month, mm -hmm. here's some different things that are going on in the Heights, come on and let's get involved. Because that way you can have more people coming and really enjoying. Otherwise, it's hard without the social media. like. The social media I feel like that is the most prevalent way to get across, whether that's through Instagram as well. But and I know that those specific shops as well have it, like accounts, but it's hard. I think another thing to you know, a lot of us are actually from the Peoria area. And one thing that we kind of all collectively noticed is when we're in the Heights, we find out a lot about what's going on in the Heights. But when we're at home, like from Dunlap or Morton or Peoria, that's when we don't really hear the communication as lot. So maybe just as simply as just um, outside businesses doing promotions for you. I know a lot of you uh, have flyers that you hang within your businesses for upcoming events or uh, recently the Christmas walk at uh, Forest Park Nature Center and stuff like that. It would be good and beneficial, I think, if outside communities uh, were aware as well because a lot of us love to come to the Heights, but maybe we just aren't quite aware of what is here until we're here necessarily. Could I ask a personal take since you are all seniors and you're in your 20s? What's your social media medium? Like what do we Which use? What's your most predominant social media? Instagram. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I have some 20 year old yeah. children, <laughs> and because I am on Facebook, they think I'm archaic. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's interesting because your study is relying on Facebook very much, except. What was interesting to me, also, you had um, a lot of young feedback in your data. So, right. it, you know, it's, right. I don't know, it's kind of cross-information that I've taken in. Right. We didn't only use Facebook, though. We did do the surveys. Um, okay. Like, we could, we could text them, too. You know, we could send them a link and text people that try to get them out. So. Instagram's a little harder to share something like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, to be transparent, most of us just said, hey, mom and dad, put this on your Facebook, because mm -hmm. all yeah. of your friends will do it. Uh, or our professor shared it with us, so we could get a more diverse um, age category, because if we're just sending it to our friends, that doesn't give you quite the results that we would hope to get for you. Um, but yeah, Instagram is one of the things that we love to look at. Like, you can type in Peoria Heights, and, and then just see whatever's going on. Um, who's there at the moment, and it's really, a, it's what I love to kind of find out what's going on uh, and what's new and what's available through that kind of marketing. Mm -hmm. of, of the nine of y'all, do any of you not have Facebook? Um, it's more like a, I think we all have Facebook, and so when there's an event coming up, like for our sorority or fraternities or anything going on, when there's an event or something happening, I refer to Facebook. I go to Facebook because you can add a lot more, you can longer posts, more information, whereas Instagram is very good for a very snapshot, there's a picture, you can read it very easily and continue. So I think that might be where the discrepancy lies, is like Facebook is where I go to get a lot of information about specific events, and so that's probably why a lot of people were referring to Facebook, whereas though we check Instagram every day, I do still get my notifications for um, Facebook on specific events. Mm -hmm. 
Also, I'm I'm one I'm the only one not from Peoria area, um, and I will I know like some places I'm from Chicago suburbs, so some Chicago restaurants or retail places will have their Instagram, but when like my hometown also has a pretty big and predominant um, destination downtown, and all of those places go to Facebook. So for me, although I might frequent Instagram more, I'm more likely to look up a restaurant or a business on Facebook just to see what they have going on that week, or if there's live music at this uh, restaurant, or like buy this one or buy this retail shop. Like that's more where I I'm going to go for that. Basically. From the data, though, it looks like you had a pretty good sampling cross section of people. So yeah, right. um, I, I don't know if you were thinking that maybe you didn't have a good cross section from just people who might not have Facebook? No, I, well, I was thinking that, and then when you're tying it to a lot of the bars and things, it seemed like it was like a younger group, so trying yeah. to figure out why that would make sense. And then it's, it's confusing, too, when you look, you know, keep thinking back about the first presentation and that residents and non-residents, and this, this is non-residents only. Mm -hmm. um, but just trying to figure out a way how, how you can make it easy for people to get information, and whether it's like a Google alert or something that they have, or so I was just trying to figure out how can you yeah, push you, information. If you really look at the direction marketing has yeah. gone, I mean, it st first started traditional, and then digital, right. and then social, right. and now it's come full circle, and you have to do it all. I right. mean, oh. you, you have to, so that you can touch all the different uh, categories. Yeah. But I think if you don't have a social media account, I think maybe a uh, monthly newsletter through email. I'm, I'm not a business official. owner. I'm a resident, so oh, okay. no. Mm -hmm. I just growing trying to stay this <laughs> Was there any other questions? All right. Well, those were all very good questions. Do you have a question? <laughs> no, but before you leave, I, I want you to just share something. Maybe it's something that you presented. Maybe it's something you didn't present. Maybe it's a, a conversation you had with somebody going through this process. But what's, what's one thing if each of you said, you know, here's, here's something that, you know, we're going to send you a paper that's going to be 70 pages, you're going to have two of those, you're going to have all these slides, you're, you know, you're going to have a lot of stuff. But remember this. What, what would that be? What would that remember this be? I, I can go first. Mm, please. Uh, I have something. Um, so my town um, kind of went through this. I've lived, I live in Naperville. Um, it's a pretty big downtown. We've ranked number two after Chicago. Um, <laughs> um, I've lived there my entire life, so over 20 years I've seen um, us getting a bunch of surveys and seeing development and new restaurants and retail come in. And parking was a big issue, and living so close to downtown, I still see parking um, like always as an issue. Um, we've had um, little, like, we have put up more signs in town. Um, in our downtown area, and we also have those like stand-up podium ones like around town, and they'll show you where the free parking lots are, um, and that has simplified us. We have added, like, obviously we have to like add a garage because it has grown so much, but that was something that I saw when I was um, in high school that they added little like signs and like, well, whether you're driving or whether you're walking, so you are more aware of where parking is um, rather than having to add more lots. Um, 